everybody, Jody Spiegelhoff here from Spiegel Mob Scraps. Just wanted to run through with you guys real quick um, how I started to make some of my shaker cards. Um, I found this um, and actually learned this particular technique um, from Jennifer McGuire. I thought it was super clever. Um, most of her stuff or all of her stuff is super clever. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you um, so you've got an idea of how another way you guys can make shaker cards. So this is just a nesting die cut circle set from Sizzix. I actually got this around Christmas for a super good deal on joanne.com. So make sure you watch their sales for their dies. Um, and the shipping was really reasonable also. So this is the die set I'm using. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be die cutting a piece of this um, fun foam, craft fun foam. And it's just that foam that you know your kids make stuff with and glue stuff together. And they've made frames and there's different shapes and stuff. But I just buy the plain, like a four or five by eight or nine sheets that you can get them on Amazon uh, actually really really cheap so it's about an eighth of it an eighth of an inch thick and it die cuts just fine so I'm just gonna show you guys how I die cut this um, to get it set up I just have my um, Sizzix circle die uh, washi taped right on there just so it doesn't shift on us and I'm gonna run it through my big shot I run it through once and then I bring it back through a second time just to make sure it goes all the way through because it is a little bit thicker material. And voila, you get a nice, even, smooth cut. And just peel your washi tape off. And then you've got this perfect circle that lines up perfect with your other top piece or your top card. And you can start creating your shaker window from there. All right, I'm gonna keep going with my card here. Um, I've already got my card base set up with a piece of four and a half or four and a quarter by five and a half um, size card. And then I'm just gonna end up layering this over the top and making a window here. And then I'll add my sentiment at the end. All right, so all I need to do to do that, I'm gonna add my piece of acetate right over the top of this and just use my scrapbook adhesives tape runner and by far these are my favorite tape runners in the whole world they don't fight with me they don't get stuck they're fantastic so now you can kind of get a little piece of acetate in there so that, that'll be my window and all I used was just a piece of packaging um, to create that so now I'll put the rest of my tape runner around the edge you want to make sure that you seal it pretty good so that you don't have um, you know, sequins sneaking out your corners. Another way that people make these is they actually use, um, you know, regular foam adhesive, but I think that eats up a lot of foam adhesive and makes it difficult to be really cost effective as, that, as far as that goes. And someone over the edge here, I'm just going to fold that over and then go to my other adhesive or go-to adhesive just a scotch two-sided adhesive I'm all out of my ATG adhesive right now so shame on me so I'll have to get some more of that okay and then to create a little raised window make sure you get that lined up really well I'm going to go off camera just for a minute so I can make sure I have this lined up really well. Okay, voila. So that's mounted on the back of there. I'm just going to figure out where I want to exactly adhere this down and go from there. All right, here we are to finish up this card. So one little trick that I use to get my window aligned correctly is to actually put the negative right in there so I can line that up oops and just make sure that stays there and then I just draw a really faint um, pencil line around and that's where I'll set my or place some of my sequins 
I don't want them all to fall at the bottom either. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple glue pieces of glue or drops of glue dots in there. I'm going to go ahead and add some sequins. Now these little guys are the 10 millimeter white opaque sequins from my shop. And I'm also going to add some of these fun little tiny silver ones too. And these silver ones are about an eighth of an inch. They're super tiny, but they're perfect for little fun shaker card elements. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and prep the back of this. Foam adhesive, or foam, I should say, crafty foam. With my two sided scotch tape. And I hope to goodness my ATG replacements or refills come in the mail this week because I am fresh out. But that's okay. Adapt and overcome, right? Okay. And now that's all, that's all nice and loaded up, make sure some of those silver guys stick up there too. And that tacky glue will dry clear too, so you'll never even see that, which is fantastic. Alright. So once that glue dries in there, that will be perfect and you never even know that that's in there but it also keeps other stars kind of hung up there so it gives a really cool effect all right so let's do the sentiment real quick I've already went ahead and stamped Versamark ink on here and then went ahead and put some Ranger um, white embossing powder on there so we'll go ahead and zap this And get that nice bright white sentiment going on. And I don't want this quite as thick so I'm going to trim this down a bit. And I'm going to make a little flag. Easiest way I make my little flags or little banners is just cut right down the middle and then cut on a diagonal and just meet it in the middle like that. Okay, let's get this little die popped on here for you. Another thing I'm waiting for is my, or some white stays on ink. Cause I wanna do some stamping right on the acetate. I think that'd be really awesome. All right, I think I'm actually gonna put this right on top of my acetate window and I'll add a few other little things to top it off and some ribbon and I'll be good to go. Okay and this is how I decided to finish off the card. I went with some fantastic baker's twine from the twinery which I love. It's nice and thick um, but not too thick at the same time. It's got a really 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 nice texture to it and it's a fantastic shop. So um, instead of actually tying a rip bow or using a full ribbon, I decided to use the twine or Baker's twine and it really worked well with the card. And being it's a masculine card, I didn't want to do you know a bow or anything either. So I created this little slip knot um, joint, if you will, in here. And I'll demonstrate how I did that um, on, well, on a smaller piece of twine and then my embossing buddy. So to create that, um, you know, of course, a smaller scale I'm working with here, but create a little slip knot, if you will. And um, you're going to want to start with, you know, your regular piece of twine. Fold it in half so you've got this end looped over. And then pretend like this is the middle of your card. And loop that through. And when you've got it, the tension that you would want it, then all I did was go ahead and trim off. So you've got about an inch of overhang there, maybe a little bit more. 
and then glue it up just like that. And then let that sit to dry and your joint will be all set. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Thanks.